Good evening. We are now on the third section of module number one, which is about gate level minimization. Introduction. Computer-based logic synthesis tools can minimize a large set of Boolean equations efficiently and quickly. Nevertheless, it is important that a designer understand the underlying mathematical description and solution of the problem. So there are already a lot of computer softwares available that can automatically minimize a large circuit or synthesize it's called synthesize they're called synthesis tools and uh, the companies that we have mentioned from the previous section synopsis and cadence they have this synthesis tools that can automatically convert um, circuits into their uh, minimized minimized equivalent we have a large circuit and they will automatic these tools will automatically minimize them which uh, which will result in a more efficient take a efficient circuit However, let's study this minimization techniques here so that we can have an understanding as a designer. We need to understand how the computer th does that. Objectives to generate gate level minimized equivalent circuit to reduce the number of logic in the circuit. Gate level minimization. This is the design task of finding an optimal gate level implementation of the Boolean functions describing a digital circuit. We have already explained that in the previous section, so let's go to directly to the method that we are going to use to minimize the circuits. We have this what we call K map or Carnot map. This is a pictorial form of a truth table. Provides, it provides a simple, straightforward procedure for minima minimizing Boolean functions. We have here an example of a K map or Carnot map. So it's the same as a truth table, but here we are using boxes. Each square representing one mean term of the function that is to be minimized. Remember mean terms, max terms, mean terms. So each box is square here. Each square represents one mean term. For a two variable K map, for example, we have the variables x and y. So there are, will be four squares. Recall that. Let's try to paint. Recall that if we have wait, wait, wait. It's not if we have two variables x and y, then how many how many combination of inputs do we have? We have x and y, so two inputs. We expect four input combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, four inputs. So how many it will have corresponding output also? One it's not zero we have output here output here output corresponding output so there will be four outputs and four mean terms so there will be four boxes if we have two variables to input x and y and for the labeling which square corresponds to that mean term for a two variable, 
two variable function mean term of zero is placed on the upper right m0 here and then m1 is on the upper ah, m0 is on the upper left m1 mean term 1 is on the upper right m2 is on the lower left m3 is on the lower right so 0 1 2 3 so we need to remember this the location of the mean terms for a two variable k map zero one two three then we write the variable x we divide we put a divider here and then put the variable x on the lower left side and then y on the upper right side and then we label 0 here and then 1 0 1 and for the y we have 0 1 it will be easier to remember the location of the mean terms this way for example mean term 0 we know that this one corresponds to mean term 0 and the input here means x I mean not input the output mean term corresponding output mean term is x prime y prime it's for 0 0 x prime y prime that's why it writes here x prime y prime for mean term 1, this is mean term 1, 0, 1. And then the out corresponding output is x prime y. If it's 0 here, the mean term is having a complement in its variable. So x prime y. x prime y. Same with m2, x, y prime. Then m3, 1, 1. Both are 1, so no no more complement so xy xy for m3 and it will be easier if we combine the values of x and y we know that this 0 and 1 here corresponds to x and 0 and 1 here corresponds to y so for example for m3 we have xy is 1 1 so xy yes that is just for us to easily remember the location of the mean terms in the k map <coughs> let's have an example <coughs> excuse for example we have a function that has a combination of mean terms m1 m2 and m3 Recall that we can represent a function as this sum of mean terms or as a product of max terms. So a sum of mean terms m1, m2, m3. We write 1. The procedure is we write 1 to the location of the mean terms. So we know that m1 is here. So we write 1 here. m2 is here, lower, lower left. So we place 1 here m3 that's location is here so we write 1 after writing 1 to each of the mean term location we are going to simplify by encircling <coughs> or combining those which has a 1 so Right. For example, this is our K map, and then we have 1, 1, 1 here. We know that this is x, y, 0, 1, 0, 1. We encircle or connect adjacent squares, adjacent squares that is a 1. 
So what is this one? And what is this one? If we combine these two, we know that both of these are under x equals 1. This is equal to x equals 1. While this one corresponds to, right? both are y equals 1. So, we add that. The result is x or y. x or y. Can we simplify it further? Not anymore. This is the simplified version of our original function is m1 plus m2 plus m3 and this is equivalent to x prime y plus x y prime plus m3 is x y. So we have simplified this function boolean function x prime y plus x y prime plus x y into x plus y so this is our simplified form and we did that using Carnot map or k map by combining adjacent squares and getting the characteristic or equivalent equation the important thing in simplifying with Carnot map is all one should be covered we have no one here, so it, no one here, so we don't mind this square. We only need to cover all the ones and get the equation corresponding to that, to those square boxes. That's how we use the Carnot map. Let's have another example for the three variable K map. <coughs> Excuse me. 3 variable k map for example we have the variables x, y, z so uh, how many outputs and combination of inputs are we going to need for a 3 variable 3 variables x, y, z so 2 to the 3 2 times 2 times 2 was 8 Zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 two three four five six seven eight so these are the combinations of x y z inputs and ups and we have a corresponding output let's call it f of x y z There are eight outputs for each of the input combinations. And we are going to find or simplify using the three variable K map. So this is the arrangement for the three variable K map. Mean terms, we have eight mean terms for the eight outputs. 0, 1, 2, 3. Notice the order. 0, 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 0, 1, 2, 3. That's how we write it. Example. M0, M1, M2, M3. 0, 1, 2, 3. M4, M5, M6, M7. Am I right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then... The assignment of the variables is x, y, z. x, y, z. And if we label numbers, it's 0 here, 1, 0, 1 for x. For y, z, 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. 0, 0, 
This corresponds to what? This corresponds to Z. 0, 1, then 2, 3. This is YZ, this is Y, this is Z. Okay. Let's have an example. For the corresponding mean term, still, this is mean term 0. And the combination is, since it's 0, 0, 0, that's X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Mean term here is m1 so x prime y prime z wait 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 where am i now i need to adjust in squares and the map differ by only one variable yeah that's why it is arranged this way because we want that the two adjacent squares in the map differ by only one variable 0, 1, 2, 3 yeah because if we write it 0, 0, 0, 1 and then 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3 if we write it this these two adjacent are in how many variables change in variable 0 went to 1 and then 1 went to 0 so there are two changes two variables change at the same time that's why this is not used that's why 0 0 0 1 is followed by 1 1 here the only variable that change is y which is from 0 to 1 then 1 1 to 1 0 the only variable that change is z from 1 to 0 so an example 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 let's write our k map x y z So it's 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. I don't know. 1, 1, 1, 0. <coughs> simplify, simplify the Boolean function f of x, y, z is f of x, y, z is equal to the sum of the mean terms 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, mean terms, 0, 1, 2, so write 1 to every mean term, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so how are you going to simplify this one? We have already written the ones for each mean term, we will in circle adjacent squares that have 1, we can't we can't do diagonal, it's not allowed, so there are only two, two adjacent squares that has a 1. So this is the most simplified form. We have covered all the ones, that's the most important last step to cover all the ones. So what is this and what is this? What function can we get from this? This is 0, 0, 0, 1. Y is common, right? Y is 0. This is Y equals 0. And that corresponds to Y prime. Y equals 0 is corresponds to Y prime function here. Z is common. Is one. Y is 1 z is not common but y is 1 uh, this is not complete this is y is 0 and x is equal to 1 so we need to include the x so it's x y prime here y is equal to 1 and x is equal to 0 right 
this row here is x is equal to 0 this row here is x is equal to 1 so we need to include x and that corresponds to x prime y x prime y so we combine the two these are what we need these functions are what we need so f of x y z therefore if I write each of the mean term, the original function is what is the original function? This is for a three variable mean term two plus mean term three plus mean term four plus mean term five. This is equal to what is mean term two for three variable? It starts from zero 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 up to one one one. For two that is equal to in term 2 0 1 and then x 0 1 0 what is 0 1 0 let's write first the variables so 0 1 0 m3 that's 0 1 1 let's write first the variables 0 1 1 so 0 1 1 m4 that's write first the variables that's 0 1 0 0 hey f no Z m4 is 1 0 0 1 0 0 so 1 0 0 and then m5 that's 5 is 101 so m5 101 so y is complemented so from this use from this mean terms we have four mean terms two three four five we have simplified it into x y prime is one x y prime plus x prime y so this is a simplified form instead of this from this mean terms we have simplified the function to x y prime plus x prime y let's check yeah x prime y the answer x y prime x prime y plus x y prime For f having four mean terms, we simplified it to have two mean terms with fewer gates. Yeah. Fewer gates, x y prime plus x y x prime y plus x y prime. We can verify this with Boolean algebra. Of course, not, let's not do it anymore. You can verify it yourself if you want to check that this function x prime y plus x y prime is equivalent to this sum of mean terms for four variable let's go to four variable k map four variable k map so we have uh, four variables x y z uh, w x y z again the important thing is to arrange let's arrange each square such that only one variable will change between adjacent squares wait 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 Where was I? So this is arranged like this zero one two three four five six seven. So it's the same for the three variable, right? Zero one two three four five six seven. And then Eight nine is continued in the very bottom to so eight nine, ten eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
so it's not to be located here but at the very bottom 8 9 10 11 so 13 14 15 so that when you write down wx only one will change between adjacent only one variable will change between adjacent squares like this here one change to one one the variable that change is w w change from zero to one while here the variable change from x change from one to zero let's have an example Sixteen adjacent squares produce a function that is always equal to one. Let's let's read some of the simplification process. One square represents one mean term, giving a term with four literals. Yes, because because we have four variables, so each mean term has four variables. Two adjacent squares represent a term with three literals. If we have only two adjacent squares, so one variable will be reduced. So we will now have three variables. Four adjacent squares represent a term with two literals. We further simplify it if we have four squares, adjacent squares. Then eight adjacent squares represent a term with one literal. If we have eight, then there is only one literal. For that, one equivalent literal. And for 16, if all the squares, 16 squares, have 1 in them, then the function is always equal to 1. Let's try this. Simplify the Boolean function. Simplify the Boolean function f of w, x, y, z. x, y, and z, which is equal to the summation of the mean terms. 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12, 13, and then 14. Nine, then we write the, we draw the K map, 16 K map. W X Y Z then zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one 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 zero zero one so this is one eh? zero mean term one mean term zero mean term one mean term two three Zero one two three four five six seven then eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen. So this is it. Mean terms zero one. If you are if you still can't memorize the mean terms, you you need to look for the guide. We need to write down that this is mean term 0, 1. We need to write down the mean terms if you can't remember. Again, let's check. Mean term 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So let's see what can we combine. We can combine this entire, right? Well, here only this and this. Three adjacent squares. We can't make an equation out of it. We can only get equations in 
factors of 2, 2 adjacent squares, 4 adjacent squares, 8 adjacent squares, 16 adjacent squares, but not 3. Okay, so what can we get from this? What equation is this? Wait, wait, wait. This is W. This is... We know that this is W equals 1. <coughs> oh my god. I'm having a... Let's check the original. Mm -mm -mm. Y. Y is common, right? Y is 0. This is y equals 0 for the entire row. And then here, yeah, we know that 8 squares correspond to 8 adjacent squares represent a term with 1 literal. So this is the literal that we are looking for, y. y equals 0, That's me that means y prime. So our f is y prime plus we need this too. What is this? Uh, that's W equals W equals 0. And then <coughs> W equals 0 and then YZ equals 1, 0. W equals 0 and YZ equals 1, 0. If we combine that, that is w prime y z prime so w prime y z prime now for the slower adjacent squares what is this this is w x x equals 1 right x equals 1 wx x is common which is 1 x equals 1 and then w i y z equals 1 0 so x y z prime plus x y z prime right x equals 1 so we have don't complement y z is 1 0 z is 0 so we complement z so x y z prime so this is the simplification y prime plus w prime y z prime plus x y z prime let's check let's check oh <coughs> Yeah, y prime. We have simplified it into y prime. Ooh, wait. Plus w prime, y z prime, plus x. It further simplify the function. Okay. Mm. The book from the book. This two are adjacent. So this one. I'm sorry. This let's use another color. This one is connected here, so they are adjacent. We can consider them as adjacent. Okay. So what is that function now? Instead of instead of this becomes What is common between this and this? Z is 0. So instead of this, Z equals 0 is common. So it becomes W, w prime Z prime, right? Yeah, W prime Z prime. So we can si further simplify this as w prime z prime how about this one we 
we can consider this also as adjacent here so what is common between this and this columns z still z equals zero is common this is z this is z from yz so z equals zero z equals zero is common so we use this and this so that's x z prime so this becomes x z prime so our final function is y prime plus w prime z prime plus x z prime so we have here y prime plus w prime z prime plus x z prime can check the book for more examples so f is equal to y prime plus w prime z prime plus x z prime so we have simplified this function having this mean terms using k map k map or carno map can check other examples here even the adjacent corners, you can consider them as adjacent. Mm. So endpoints, for the endpoints, you can consider them as adjacent. Just like if we write this is adjacent to this part what is common what is common we will look at here the rows so x equals 0 is common x equals 0 that would correspond to x prime right So we are done with Carnot map. That's how it is simplified using. That's how we simplify Boolean functions using Carnot map. Let's go to don't care conditions. <coughs> 